Imagine this. It's a warm summer day, and you've just finished working in your garden. You're pulling out excess weeds, watering your tomatoes. Note that you have drops of perspiration on your forehead due to all the hard work you've done. What's on your mind? Is it to wash your dirt faked fingernails or to throw your sweaty clothes into the washing machine? Maybe to splash some cool water on your face? Notice how, in order to perform all these actions, they all require one key ingredient water. This substance that we are so fortunate to have that many of us take it for granted because it's just there, always there. But for many, it's not. If I were to ask what the biggest worry on your mind right now is, what would you say? Maybe it's stress over an upcoming exam that's consuming all of your thoughts, or maybe it's that a toxic relationship may or may not be living in your head rent free. When battling these problems, accessing water may as well be the last thing on your mind. But did, you, but did you know that for many, simply obtaining that drop of water is something that many people have to worry about every single day? This brings me to the issue that I'd like to talk about today, the water crisis, also known as water scarcity, when a lack of resources fails to meet the standard demand. Let's look at the elephant in the room. Are we running out of water? Even though Earth's water is finite, the answer to that question is actually no. This is because its quantity cannot increase nor decrease all thanks to the water cycle. But even though this great thing, the water cycle, which allows water to be filtered and travel within, within our atmosphere, does not mean that it's just churning out fresh and clean water to every corner of the globe. In fact, according to the CDC, more than one billion individuals live without enough clean and safe water. In retrospect, about 70% of Earth is covered in it, right? But only 3% is considered fresh, and of that, 2.6 is deemed undrinkable because it's locked up in ice caps or stored too far beneath the earth to be extracted, leaving only a hefty 4.4% of earth's drinkable water to be used among almost 8 billion people, most of which is far from drinkable. Let's break down the reasoning behind this. The main two causes of the water, water crisis can be organized into either category, physical or economic. A physical water crisis is when there isn't enough water to meet all demands, usually due to climate. Dry parts of the world are often associated with this, but with the climate there allowing for little water to actually make its way into the homes of residents. Dry, um, when places such as, when places, have dry, when places have dry climates, it's hard for people to access water. When events such as natural disasters occur, they can cause the water they can cause the destruction and contamination of water supplies, especially when these places are unprepared. Floods, for instance, are often described as the perfect storm for disease outbreaks. They increase the risk for diseases such as cholera and typhoid. The second type is an economic water crisis. This is when a lack of water investment fails to satisfy the human need for it. To be more precise, it's a lack of water investment in the infrastructure of water and it fails to satisfy the human need for it. When people think of this term, poverty-stricken places in Africa often come to mind, but the scope of this issue is much larger. In fact, research conducted by the World Health Organization reports that more than one in 10 people lack access to basic drinking water services, which is not very good. In fact, Given the fact that so much of water is used for agriculture and industrial purposes already, does not leave much left over for us to consume because so much of it is used unsustainably. Fertilizer runoff from agriculture water usage can contaminate sources of water causing algal blooms and therefore deems it undrinkable. If I ask whether you drink a substantial amount of water every day, what would you say? I hope you said yes, because water is the, an essential element to life. Not drinking enough and being dehydrated can lead to many negative effects such as dizziness and sleepiness, all the way to kidney failure. For more context, try to recall a time when you felt thirsty, such as feeling the need to quench your thirst on a hot summer day, or waking up in the middle of the night and reaching over to a nightstand only to find that your cup of water isn't there. Not so pleasant, is it? Now, if I ask what color the water you drink is, what would you say? I know that for basically everyone in my community, they would say clear, including me, safe to drink. So if I were to hand you a glass of this brownish, muddy-looking water, would you drink it? 
just take a sip. And no, please don't mistake this for chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah, anyone in their right mind would say, no, Willow, how can you expect me to drink water that's gonna get me sick? And that's because we have a choice. Those of us who are fortunate enough have a choice, but many do not. So what are the negative effects of drinking contaminated water? Well, you have to look at what's in the water. The presence of bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella in dirty water can lead to many various heart health effects when you drink it, such as dysentery, polio, cholera, typhoid, and so many other long illnesses that come along with it. And given the fact that the world is still battling the COVID-19 pandemic, it's not helping the water crisis at all. Good hygiene is the first step in fighting back for issues like a pandemic, but the fact that an estimated 2.6 billion people have no access to sanitation isn't helping, and water is a big part of sanitation. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is how water affects our economy, such as numerous economic opportunities being lost due to time spent collecting water. When you think about it, $260 billion is lost every year because of the water crisis. What I'm trying to say by this is that the time spent collecting water is all used up instead of being used for time such as education and work. So people have to wait in lines for hours in order to access water and some people don't even have the option to wait in lines for hours. The next thing that this is affecting is our Earth. The negative impacts of this on our beloved planet Earth is numerous as well. Every year, the threats that this crisis places on our environment is drying out our lakes and rivers. Water pollution coming from many different water sources is ruining our ecosystems and destroying entire environments. Given that we're all part of the world and the biosphere, every little thing that happens can impact us in one way or another. Take the Flint, Michigan water crisis, for example. Their action of taking water from the Flint River without properly treating it led to various health effects concerning the lead that was in the water. Or take Mex Mexico City, one that gets almost 42 inches of rain per year. They suffered from water shortages because 40% of their water gets wasted. Or even take the Colorado River Basin, which supplies more than 90% of Southern Nevada's water supplies. They have had water shortages deemed on the past, in the past. So how can we make a difference? For starters, we can donate to trustworthy water funding charities. After that, we can promote and practice responsible waste disposal, such as picking up after your pets or making sure that your trash gets into a trash can and not nature. And what most importantly, we can spread awareness. There are numerous ways to do this. I've created a website right here that informs many people can, that can inform you about the importance of water crisis, which I hope you'll share to your friends and family. Because after all, Nelson Mandela once said, we can change the world and make it a better place. It is in your hands to make a difference. Pollution, poverty, the water crisis, these are just a fraction of the many issues that plague our world today. So I think that it's time that we stop listening and start doing something because we need to understand that the fate of current and future generations are in the hands of us. It is up to us to make a change in the world for the better. It may seem like a big weight to lift, but I truly believe that by working together, we can do what it takes to end the global water crisis. Thank you.